Hello and welcome to this Oxid Academy training. In this video, we will add a setting to a module where you can input an item number. This item number is then taken by a function that provides product data to display these as a banner in the shop's front end. The example module does provide a good functionality at this point. However, the item number can't be specified by any administrator. Currently, it is hard-coded in our controller. To change this, we must introduce module settings. These are configured in the metadata.php file. We must add a new array called settings. Inside this array, each setting is a separate array again. A setting definition consists of group, name, type, and value. The name is simply an identifier we want to give our setting. As always with identifiers, we prefix with our module ID to ensure uniqueness. The group must not be unique per setting, but for each module. Therefore, we also prefix the group with our module ID, but we can use this group for several settings inside our own module. The group results in a collapsible panel in the administration area. In our example, we choose OXTRPP B underscore product selection for group and OXTRPP B underscore item number for the actual setting. As you may guess by the name, this setting will be an input field for the item number. This is where the type comes in. The type is set to STR, which means it is a string setting, a simple text field. We decide for text field since an item number may consist of different characters like numbers, letters, as well as special signs. There are several other setting types that are listed in our online documentation. The fourth and last key is the value key. It defines the default value of the setting. In our example, it is just an empty string, since we do not want to specify any default item number. After adding this section to our metadata.php file, we need to update the module configuration again by running the OE module install command. Remember to do this after any changes in your metadata.php file. If everything went fine, you should see your input field in the administration area under extensions, modules, settings. Currently, you will see some errors. This is normal due to missing translations. These translations must be added in specific translation files like the ones for the front end. This time, we add translations for the administration area, which requires us to put the language directories en and de into the theme directory inside the views directory. So in our case, it is views slash admin underscore twig slash en and same for other languages. For the file name, you have two options. You can use the underscore lang.php naming, or you can use the file name module underscore options.php. While the later one is specifically for module settings, the first one is for any other translation in the administration area and follows the same structure as the front end translations. The file must end with underscore lang.php and is usually prefixed with the module ID followed by the keyword admin and the language abbreviation. Since we are talking about module settings, we will use the file module underscore options .php. Inside this file, you need to add the translations consisting of the identifier as array key and the actual translation as array value. The identifier for setting translations is a combination of mandatory prefixes and the settings identifier defined in the metadata.php. You see the full translation identifier in the error message you should find in your administration area. The setting itself has the prefix shop underscore module, while the group uses prefix shop module group. You can also add a help text with help shop module. The text you provide for this will be hidden in a small info window that is opened by a click on the little question mark button displayed behind the setting. As soon as you added translations for all languages, usually you need to reactivate the module again to see the correct translations in the administration area. If this does not help, try to clear your cache. If everything went fine, you will have a good display of your setting with understandable descriptions. Now it's time to finally use the setting in our source code. Settings are read and written by the module setting service. This means we can use the container factory in our star controller to get the service and then use the method getString to read our setting. Pay attention which get method you use. There are different methods for different types of settings. 
In our case, we went with a simple text field, which is a string variable. This is why we use getString. If you introduce a checkbox, you will use getBoolean instead. Other methods are provided for different setting types. Also have a close look for the returning data type. While getBoolean will return a bool value, getString does return an Unicode string object. Since we want a simple string value, we cast the return value to string. All the getters from the module setting service require two arguments. First is the identifier for the setting, which is OXTRPPB underscore item number in our example. The second one is the module ID. The setting group is not used when reading or writing settings. The group is just for sectioning in the administration area. If you omit the group in metadata.php file, the setting is not displayed. This may come handy if you decide to build your own settings page. For more information and tutorials about the Oxid eShop, check out our other videos or head to the online documentation.